Good morning, everyone. Good to see everyone out this morning. Let's open up with that chorus, We've Got the Power. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be You know it now, so we'll sing it again. <laughs> We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be. just running to and fro in this world nowadays with this pandemic, with the violence, with the hatred. But you know something? God's in control. And that's who I put my trust in today. I put my trust in Jesus Christ because Jesus said, I will go with you all the way to the end. Amen. That's our hope today. Let's turn to page 391, 391, revive us again. Amen. Good song. Good to have Brother Mark back, even though he didn't speak to me when he come in. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm crushed. Too late. Sister Kay. I mean, I had... Too late. <laughs> I was having the DTs because I was missing you. I was having withdrawals, man. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you and Steph and family left us. I normally I'm fairly quick-witted, and I was hoping to just spin us around some way, and I got absolutely nothing. <laughs> I think we better sing "Revive Us Again." Yeah, I need revive. <laughs> we praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above.
anybody at all. Yes, Brother Walt. Amen. Just the opportunity and knowing that we could wake up this morning. Amen. Anybody else? I do. I need to praise the Lord because Walt walked in this morning and said, I have a present for you, and he handed me my ATM card. <laughs> I went to the ATM before church to get my tithe. And I'm not feeling real well this morning, so I'm not really thinking, and I grabbed my money and my receipt, and, and I left. But... I wish I could say that that was the very first time I've done it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I've had a police officer call me, tell me my card was at the police station. I had the bank call me to tell me my card was at the bank. And the last time, it was never returned to me. So um, this is at least the fourth time. So I just want to praise God how he watches over me because, you know, Walt could have wiped me up my account out today. <laughs> God, that uh, a Christian person found it, and he's my friend. So, praise God. <laughs> praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for Brother Walt. Brother Ray, I pulled up in front of the bank. I heard it beep, and I said, somebody walked off without the car. And I went up and pulled it out, and I saw who it was. I know where it is. I should have stuck it back in again. I, I didn't hear a beep. That's how unfocused I am today. I did not hear the thing beep at me. It is loud. We gotta help each other out. I reckon. Anybody else got anything you'd like to share? Well, Bill, I'm thankful that we serve a God that we can not just sing a song that says revive us again, but we can ask Him that. Uh, we could easily be serving a God that says you get one opportunity, one chance, you mess it up, and I'm done with you. And that's yeah. not who He is. And oh, thank God for I don't that. I about the rest of you, but I'm thankful that I can come to Him and say, Lord, I need revive again. Amen. Yes. And He just He just poured out. Amen. Amen. We're thankful for God and the God being loved us. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else from God? Yes, Jody. I have um, a week of unspoken praises. All right. <laughs> we'll take them. We'll take them. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm thankful to be back. I wasn't planning on being gone the whole time Steph was gone. But yeah. I got sick and then my yeah, mom got yeah. sick. <laughs> she was sick. I was sick. I got sick. My mom got sick and then my father in law got sick. And then just, it was a crazy, crazy week. We both had my father in law, my mother both had to have emergency surgery on the same day. It was just nuts. But I'm so thankful that they are both okay. And my mom, who was raised in church her whole life, um, she never really talked about it. She actually, it was a horrible time in her life. But while she was in the hospital, she called me crying, and she was like, "I need you to, I need you to call your church, and I need you to have them pray for me because I'm in so much pain. I, I need it, and I know that that's the only thing that'll help." And I was just like, "Okay." <laughs> so my mom asked her that. That's a big deal. And then when I brought her home, she was crying, and she said, "You know, it was by the grace of God that I got through that, and I know that." And it was just, it was reassuring to me that the Lord's working on her, and, and I was so thankful for that. So. I'm thinking and praying. I know she's got a long way to go, but any little bit helps, so. Amen. Amen. Oh, besides, don't quote me. I saw her out about yesterday. <laughs> she did. She was? <laughs> <laughs> she left the wicked store. Oh, yeah, she did, yeah. <laughs> I was out going the yard. <laughs> Brother Bill, I'm always thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for the great sunshiny day. Thankful for the mountain air I got to experience and the reprieve. And um, I'm ready. I, it's always too long when I get back to church. And like, I had to work four in a row, four twelve in a row, and I, I, I had to be on call today, a last minute. And I'm like, Lord, please don't call. Please don't be this week. I need to be at church. <laughs> and praise the Lord. I don't need to be calling. Praise God. I'm excited to be here. Guys, praise the Lord. Fellowship with you guys and see all your faces. Amen. That's good stuff. Amen. Yes, Gary. I want to thank the I thank God for Kristen, Cameron, and Tommy. Last yesterday, I had a really bad epileptic seizure while we were eating pizza at our pizza place, and 
they got me the meds I needed, took care of me, got me home, and I just praised God that even though I go through all these trials with my medical, he's always got my back and helps me out and put, surrounds me with people that I need to have. He's always there. Yes, he's yes. just in time, God. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else before we go on? Let's turn to page number 524, 524. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul, Brother Bill. Amen. Praise the Lord. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, one sure it is well with your soul. Amen? Amen. Um, I should know. I should know. <laughs> 
where God is. Just putting in goodness of God first. All right. And, and this is probably, again, some other people in there. If you guys have a phone, get it out. Look up the lyrics for goodness of God. We don't have our TV going. We don't have our computer with us today. But sing along with us. Looking at those words and worshiping, knowing what they say, it just changes the whole thing for me and just listening. So you have your phone, pull it out, and listen to the lyrics and sing along with us. Because he's good, even when we don't deserve it. So. Number five. Yes, sorry.
Yes. No, I am so much better. Put your arms wide open. Yeah, you refuse. You refuse to turn around and see how good I am. I'm still going to love you and I'm still going to follow you all the way to the pits of hell. And I'm so glad that there was a time in my life where I said, you know what? Let's turn away from myself. Like this world centered on right now. It's like, me, 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 whatever pleases me. Let's turn away from that and surrender to a God who created the world. Maybe a little bit better than I did. I will never turn back. I will never be the person that I was. That old self has died. Bless you, Lord. I look back and I think, that was not me. It's not me. I'm totally separated from that. That's a different person. And I'm so thankful that I was redeemed. Amen. We're going to sing this song. We haven't practiced it in a while. I'm not sure where it starts at, but we're going to sing it because I'm so glad that we can shake off our heavy chains. Literally.
was thinking that you in your past, and I'm still fighting. I still got some bumps to go over. I don't think I've ever told you in March that I just look so much up to you guys, and I would be the godly family that you guys are. I know God can do it. I just, I know he's strong enough. And if I'm rough, and if you guys, I just want to thank you so much that you're being you brought me back to church. Amen. Every step that I take, I'm just getting a little bit closer to the same. Amen. It's a continual battle. Oh, yeah. It's still a battle. I know. Thank you. I had such a blessed day yesterday. May not mean much to you all, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> I spent uh, several hours in my sewing room yesterday working on a project that had a, a time frame attached, so had to, you know, stick with it. And um, my sewing machine's only 28 years old. <laughs> and every once in a while it does strange things. But I've had it long enough, I can pretty well fix it myself. Kind of like your husband, right? <laughs> and um, so I was getting a little flustered the nice way to put it, because I'd get about halfway down this seam and that machine would go crazy on me. And I'd have to stop, I'd have to pull stitches out, which takes much longer than putting them in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then fix the machine and start over. And I'd done that at least three times. And each time it was something different. And I said, now Lord, I need your help. There's a time frame on this and you know all about it. Jesus, would you just please help me today? And I got a call. I got three calls that afternoon. And one I was here this morning. I've got a blessing. I have to share it with you. And I would say most, all three of them would be considered unspoken requests. I didn't even know it was going on in their life. And I got one and they proceeded to explain this blessing and oh my goodness, I'm feeling it right now, Mark. I was about to dance around in that song. <laughs> and I thought, devil, you can take the machine, you can take whatever you want. But you can't take blessings. Amen. Don't ever, ever right. let him Amen. tell you Amen. he will steal your blessing. You have to give it to him, That's Zach. Right. That's the way that Amen. works. Yeah. And I said, well, I was just having myself time. So I turned around and got a major portion of something that no problems. I get another phone call from somebody else. You are not going to believe what God has done for me. And they proceeded to explain what had went before and how God had handled that situation. Something they were not. Well, in fact, all three of them, no one had prayed about that situation. They were just going on in their regular life and God just poured the blessings down upon them. And they began to tell me. And then the third person called. I got a little bit more sewing done and the third person called. I was just having me a good old time. And they called and I said, you know what? And I was just praising the Lord for them and with them. And the Lord brought to my mind how many hours and days and weeks and months, if it was all put together, that I sat right in that chair at that sewing desk and prayed over these people. Were different things going on in their lives over the years. <laughs> And here three of them called me and one day, mm -hmm. God has poured blessing out upon me. I have to share it with you. Amen. I can share it with everybody, but I have to share it with you. And the last person that called, I said, you know what? I have sat here right where I am right now and prayed over you for hours and hours and hours over the years. And it's fitting that all these blessings comes to me in here and you know what when i got off the phone just zip 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 with that machine i just got all that done time to spare god bless me zach amen he's good all the time thank you lord let's keep it he is so good you know i i was struggling this week and i at first, I was really like, man, I'm going to work so many days in a row, but those, 
on where the gut tunic is. Bless you. Bless her, Lord. Oh, bless her. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Recently, I'm like, oh, my job. After seven and a half years, it was completely blindsided. I was, I'd been there the longest. I really thought it was my second family. I went back to school at a later age. And, uh, so I wasn't always big in school, and you know, that was a big thing for me. And I know, I know the Lord <laughs> had a hand in this because I was burnt out. I was physically to the point where I couldn't hardly function when I got home at night. That's not the way I wanted to be. It hurt. My heart was broken. And yesterday, I was out, well, yesterday day before, I was out walking. And all week, you know, depressed and angry. I was crying for two weeks. And I just walk in and, you know, I just had this peace come over me. And I was like, I'm done. That's it. And I thank the Lord for letting me grieve. I thank him for never giving up on me. And I know he's got a plan. And uh, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done worrying about it, thinking about it. I'm just only going to look ahead because I know he's got something good for me. Powerful, powerful scripture, and it says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Thank you. This is God's will for you. Do not put out the Spirit's fire, do not let those step on your toes when you think that you're hurting someone's feelings. We are to be bold in our faith, and we are to give thanks in all circumstances. And COVID cannot hold us down, COVID cannot stop Jesus from coming back. COVID cannot stop us from progressing on in this life. And I, I have these issues the last couple of weeks of whether I need to stay in my job or leave my job because I have a little thin part of me. That song broke my shackles. I'm a free man. I was so burdened, but there's still a bit of a bit of me that, that wants to hold on to materialistic possessions. I want to have a vehicle, which I do not have. I want to have a house, which I do not have. I want to have stability for my daughter, which I do not have. But I have Jesus Christ, Amen. and he Amen. prepares me, and he, he sustains me, and he lets me wake up in the morning. And no matter where we are in life, no matter how hard we are, no matter how hurt we are, he's still there. He's still holding his hand out and saying, hey, I'm right here. Come, come to me. And we so often forget that he did not come to be served. He came to serve. He came to set aside his own desires. His only will is God's will, and are we living in God's will? And I need prayer. I don't know what God's will for me is in life, and I still have this, this part of me that wants to grab a hold and keep my foot in one world and foot in the other, and you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. It's impossible. And for me, I'm not in a great place. I, 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 I'm, I know where my rock is, but in Daniel it talks, every prayer is answered. Every single prayer. You think, oh, that prayer is not answered. Sometimes it's a no. <laughs> no is no can be good. Yeah. And sometimes that's what it is. And in Daniel 10, it talks of the angel and Daniel's wailing and, and, and crying. And he says, Oh, Lord, you're not answering my prayers. Well, the angels all fight the battles, and he comes to him 21 days later and he says, I heard your prayer from the first day, but spirits and, and evil warfare have gotten in the way just because you think that prayers have not been answered. They are fighting on your behalf and they are fighting to get to you. You do matter. 
You matter in this life. Everyone matters in this life. He is on his way to you. He is coming. Be patient. Do not mistake God's absence for his patience. His patience is salvation.
God has got this. God is going to do something in your Yeah. <clears throat> and in all the blessings I had this past two weeks, maybe there were some good ones. <clears throat> Consent was given for the adoption. <laughs> Blindsided everybody. <laughs> Nobody knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. That's right. <laughs> and I, I was just sitting here while you were singing that song, and I was, I wanted to stand up and say, oh, I know who, who's going to be, where I'm going to be, who I'm going to be looking for to say thank you. And the longer I sat here, I thought, man, I can't call one person out because there's so many warriors yeah. in this church. That's right. There's so much strength in this That's church. Right. There's a lot of people that I want to thank. Up in heaven, I try to thank you here, but up in heaven, you're going to get some glory. <laughs> but we got answer. I wish Michaela was here yeah. because she gave me such strength uh -huh. one night. Because it wasn't but days after yeah. I made that statement in church that I was down. I was defeated. And I was angry, and I was, I just had all those ugly feelings. And Michaela just, by the grace of God and by his leading, gave me strength. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I'm here to tell you that God came through one Amen. more time in a glorious Amen. way. Thank you, Lord. He provided me a car this week. It's just I just can't even tell you all the things that he's done, but you need to know that he answered that prayer Amen. in such a huge way. Thank you, Lord. Now, the fight isn't over. We still have some work to do. But nobody knew it was coming except for God. <laughs> and, and us in our faith. Amen. So keep praying on that with us, please. Amen. But Steph, could you girls sing? Be still. Stay still. Amen. I just thank God. Yeah. <laughs> we could just learn to take him at his word. Amen. He plainly, plainly said, you're going to see a victory. He did. Right then and there. Plainly said. And I didn't know if I believed it or not, but I was standing on it. Amen. Yes. I, just, I want to thank God because back in January he led me back, started leading me back to F and K. And if it wasn't for him leading me back to F and K, 
what I was making a week would have been harder for us to survive without her working. And with me backed up and gay, I'm making more money. And there's another reimbursement we just got. So the money that we'd have missed out for her that month, I just made just a week or so ago. So and in my past, I would have worried about her not working. And I have not worried the last two weeks. Because I know God's got it. Amen. He's got a bigger door open for her. But Amen. 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 See, yeah, right. well, I know it's open for her. Amen. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Man, like, she, got like she was saying, I've seen her. There'd be times she came home from work, she can't even walk. And she'd go straight to bed and I didn't see her. You know, and now she's got energy to go do things. <clears throat> so, God's got it. Yes, he does. <laughs>
orang gay, tidak. Ia diutus mati. Nah, oh my goodness, you guys garden, don't you? Have the farm. Okay. This is an onion. This is what it looks like before you get it at the store. This like came out of the garden yesterday. So the longer it sits, this will like dry and then you can take it off easier. But I wanted you guys to take a look at this onion. So what's on the bottom here? Do you know what those are called? Roots. Those are roots. Do you see that? Is it very pretty looking? No. No. When you get it in the store, it doesn't have any of the dirt on it. And this is usually kind of dried out, so it'll peel off a little bit easier, right? So yesterday, before I came out of the garden, it was they were standing up like this. This has been sitting a little bit. But I wanted to show you there's a lot we can learn from an onion. Did you know that onion is mentioned in the Bible in Exodus? You guys know that? <coughs> Remember when the Israelites came out of Egypt and they were griping and they were complaining and they weren't happy because they didn't have the food that they had back in Egypt and it's even mentioned that they had onions. And this is really interesting. I've never tried this, but I've known people that have tried it. Did you know that onions have like a healing property? People use them for medicine. Like you can slice them up and like if you have a cold, I think it's if you have a, a cough or a cold, you can like slice them up, put them on the bottom of your feet and put socks on them. And it will like draw that out. I'm like, do I want onion smelling feet? I mean, sometimes they're bad enough. Do I want to add onion to it? So onions are really, really important. There's a lot of things. And um, I guess you can like, oh, I read too that if you're like super thirsty, it will help with that. I just don't know that I can bite into an onion. Just, I don't know. Butter on it, butter makes it really good. But I just I don't know if I can do that with an onion. Okay, I want to show you this onion. Okay. I told Anthony, I said, don't worry, I will bring this home and I will use it today, so it's not going to waste. He's like, why is there an onion in the back? Okay. So, as you can see, how many of you have ever peeled an onion? Okay, you know, like my hands, they smell right now. And they probably will smell the rest of the church. So I debated whether or not I wanted to do this. What did you just say? Huh? What did you just say? Nothing different. I did it. You you think they smell good? Okay. So, anyways, let me hurry up, hurry along here. So, onions have layers, right? As you can see, I'm peeling back layers, right? That's kind of like our life as a Christian. When we come out of the ground, we should have, and the more that okay, hold on, let me back up. How many of you have ever seen an onion before it's planted? Aaron has, Rissa has, because there's a few people. Okay, so they're only about this big, right? They're, they're, they don't look worth much, but this started out like this. It was super tiny. So it's been in the ground for quite a while, and it's got a root, and it became attached, and it was growing. And here's the thing. As a Christian, there should be growth coming off of us. And this is kind of a weird analogy, but we should smell. We should have an odor of God, just like this onion. It, like, I can rub it on this, and it's going to smell like onion. That's the way it is with us. Mm -hmm. Whatever we touch should have the scent of God. Okay? And if not, there's a problem. Um, so, okay. So, let me start. I, I need to hurry along here. Okay. So, onions have layers, and I, we'd be here a while if I just peel one layer off at a time. So, I'm going to cut into this. Hold on, let me get this nasty stuff off. And you know what? This is like us. How many of you have ever had your layers peeled by God? Mm -hmm. Okay, first, does it hurt? Sometimes. But check it out. Look. Okay, so that outside layer was pretty ugly looking. I peeled it off. This one's got some green on it. It's, it. It looks a little bit better than the other part did. But, okay, so I want to show you this one. I'm gonna smell. Okay. So the more layers that you peel off, the better you should be looking. I just got squirted with onion. Okay. Is it? I'll take it. Okay. So see, look. 
Does that look a little bit better than when you first looked at it? Okay, so there are times where God has to peel the layers back on us. Sometimes he might even do that. He might even cut into it a little bit, and that really hurts. Okay, I, wanna, I did that so you go, can you guys see these layers? Okay, and then in the very middle is the core. Sometimes God's got to peel those layers back until he gets to the core. Mm -hmm. How many of you have ever cut into an onion or started peeling the layers back in the core of rotten? Yes. I so wish I would have kept the rotten onion um, to show you. It, it looks okay on the outside, but as you peel those layers back, it starts. And there's like these membranes in between the layers. And the more rotten it is, the more slimy and nasty it is. So it doesn't really look that bad on the outside. It might feel a little gushy. But as you get those core, those layers back, mm -hmm. that core is ugly. Guys, I want to encourage you. Listen up. Your layer, your outside layers may look fine. God looks at the core. That's where he's looking today. And if your core is starting to look a little brown and mushy, we got a lot of talking to Jesus to do, okay? <laughs> so, I just want you to remember, the next time that mom makes onions, slices an onion, whatever, and you have it on your hands, I want you to think, mm, as strong as that is, I need to be that strong for Jesus. Mm -hmm. People need to know, when I walk into a room, I have Jesus. Amen. But you need to ask, because you can cut this. How many of you have ever cried when you cut up an onion? Oh, yeah. That's the way people should be around us. Not saying they should cry when we walk in, but it should be that potent and that strong that God just exudes from us. And if Amen. you're not there, let's get the rotten core out so that God can restore that core. And if it means tearing back those layers, he's going to peel them back. That's okay if it hurts. Because there's something mighty, something good inside that he wants to get to and he wants to take care of. So, all right. And I apologize for those people sitting around me. You're going to smell onions. <laughs> nice listening today, guys. Uh, maybe she was talking about my high school days for a little bit. <laughs> I walk in, people would cry. They were the girls. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 I didn't mean that in a prideful way. He said, have you thanked God for COVID? 
Uh-uh. But I, on the way to church, I was thinking about how much COVID had changed our worship. Uh, I had to preach from my sunroom for several, several, several weeks, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Believe it or not, it's harder to preach in a room by yourself with one little phone in front of you than it is in front of a bunch of people. If you don't know, at least you know if you're getting kind of boring in your sermon, you say, okay, three people are sleeping. I need to change gears here a little bit. When you're by yourself, you don't have that. Right. But I had thought, and I never had that. To answer your question, no, I've never thanked you for COVID. But do you see how fast the world changed? Mm -hmm. How all of a sudden what we knew was normal is gone. And I will tell you very plainly this morning, my opinion is it will never get back to what we thought was normal. Amen. Yeah. I think right. from here it's just going to progress and progress and progress. But as a Christian and as a big, big fan of Bible prophecy, I get a little excited because what we're seeing is the start of the end. Yes, and there was a time where I would have been sitting where you're sitting and heard a preacher say that and went, oh, I do not want to hear about the end again. It was scary. I may have put on a front and looked tough in front of everybody else, but deep down there was something inside of me that didn't like it. Because I knew it was the end. None of us want to think about the end. But I'll tell you, I believe that's where we are. And I believe as a church, not the Kirkland Wesleyan church, but the church. I believe it's time for us to listen. I believe it's time for us to get back to our roots, get Amen. back to the basics, to get back to what the Bible has been trying to tell us for all this time. We've got so comfortable with how it was. And I believe God looked down and he seen a comfortable church and said, I can't have my people being comfortable. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do need to thank him for COVID. Maybe COVID's our warning. Mm -hmm. Maybe COVID was the... Time to wake up. Mm -hmm. right. Pray for us, Zach. God, thank you. Thank you for all the things that we have no idea what you have saved us from. Mm -hmm. The love that you have bestowed yeah. upon us. Forgive us for the things that only our eyes can see and only our minds can understand. Lord, apply our hearts to instruction and open our ears to the words of knowledge. The knowledge that can come only from you and the Spirit and Jesus. Nothing else. That nothing else. Everything else is meaningless, Lord. Allow us to approach your throne of grace with confidence in our lives. To know that you will always hold us and always sustain us. That you are everything and in all things. Mm -hmm. God, I just ask you to use Brother Mark as a mouthpiece. Speak to us. Do not let him step in and convince us. Sure. Do not let us yes. think that we can control what we need to hear and what we need to praise and what we need to worship, God. Just continue to envelop us. Holy Spirit, in us, just teach us and and counsel us, and, and you are the great spirit that, that lives in us and gives us the power to go on and to take the steps and to have the breath. Lord, just allow us to bless you and, and just when we look up to think that maybe we did something today to allow you to put a smile on the face for something that we did. And there's nothing we can do to pay back for what you did on the cross. We just thank you for your love. We thank you for everything that we've been through to grow, to persevere, to endurance, to grow through the trials. And to hold on to thought and consider it as pure joy is such a hard thing to do. Lord, I just ask you to bless us, be with us, and keep us. In your name, amen. 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 Thank you, Zach. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 8. Be thou instructed. You see, I thought about condensing because there's like 42 sermons before I can even get to what I want to get to. And be thou instructed could just, I could stay there. But before we move on from there, I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. The Lord might, but I won't. We need to hear what he's saying. He's saying, hey, wake up. Listen to me. Now, I know that it's Sunday morning, and I know that you had a late Saturday night, and I know that we've already been here an hour and 20 minutes, and, and maybe your hind end parts, your hinder parts, as the King James would say, are getting a little sore. But that's okay. If you want to stand up while I'm preaching, you can stand up while I'm preaching if that's what it takes. God's telling us this morning, be thou instructed. Amen. He said, it's time to listen to what I'm trying to tell you. He said, well, I've heard it, and I've heard it, and I've heard it, and I'm going to give you a little warning. You're going to hear it again this morning. You're going to hear a lot of what you've heard your entire life this morning. Here's my thought on that, because I love it when someone says to me, Brother Mark, it seems like you're preaching the same thing over and over again. Yeah, amen. It seems like to me God is preaching to you amen. the same message 
over and over again, maybe yeah. it is high time that you be instructed. Amen. Yes. He started out. Be instructed. Listen up. That's what he's saying. Yes. This morning, 2020, mm -hmm. July something or other. Well, I don't know what's going on. 30? Yeah, Doesn't matter. 26. 26. Man, I was way off. <laughs> yeah. God, I'm two days younger than I thought I was. <laughs> he said, be thou instructed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is as you're reading here, maybe you should pay attention. Yes. Maybe this morning, wherever you're at, wherever's going on, listen, we can walk right through this room and every single one of us have something completely different going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Angie's struggle this morning is not my struggle this morning. I've had the same job for 20 years. I can't relate to what she's going through. But God can, Angie. Yes. What he's saying is even though you're different, even though you're coming from different walks, what I have to tell you in the next few verses, you might want to give ear to. Mm -hmm. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. That sounds like a pretty stiff warning to me. God said, you need to listen because you're flirting with something and you don't even realize you're flirting with. You're dealing with things that are so much bigger than you even realize. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. That's just saying they're going to go through there and pick all the grapes so thoroughly. They're going to get every one of you. That's what that verse is saying. Just like the grape gatherer is going to go back. And he's going to check back through and make sure he got every last one of those grapes. To whom shall I speak and give warning? Warning. You ought to circle that word in your Bible. Warning. That they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. That means they can't hear. That means they're not listening. And they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them as a reproach, and they have no delight in it. Does this sound familiar to you at all? Yeah. Do you know what the world can't handle today? <laughs> Sound biblical teaching. Yes. Amen. Yep. Sound biblical teaching. Preaching. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. You know what we've done? We said it's time to water it down. So instead of just a one or two translations of the Bible, there's 500 translations of the Bible. Well, that word offends. I'm sorry, but if a word offends you, grow up. Amen. It's a word. Seriously, I'm done with it. I'm offended, Bernie. It says man in my Bible. And it should say man and woman. Man means mankind. We learned that in first grade. Yep. Yes. Seriously. Mm -hmm. We're so offended. We can't handle it. Come on. We live in a world that doesn't want to hear the truth. You know why you don't want to hear the truth? It hurts. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. We don't want to hear the truth because it hurts. we got to take away from the King James Bible because it's pretty plain. And it tells you, thou shall not. So let's translate it out, right? Let's get it, let's get all the way to the message Bible. Let's get to the message translation. I can't even call that one a Bible. Listen, I try not to get into translations because I might offend you, but if you're using that one, don't. You want to read it and get a rough idea of what the Bible says, go for it. But we're pulling stuff away from the Word of God. Why? So it doesn't offend me? God said you need to hear it. You need to hear it this morning. This morning with everything that's going on in the world. With everything that's happening all around us. And, and we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And, and I look around. God gave me a pastor's heart. God gave me a responsibility for my flock. Yeah. And you know what I see when I look out? Missing people. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bill, I see missing people. Yes, yeah. sir. There is. I see pews. Yes. Where people used to sit. Teenage faces. I haven't seen it. Come on. It's true. I think of people that I've seen come up. And I've seen them have a movement in the altar. Yes. And I've seen them changing. And I see them getting closer. 
seen him stand and testify. Mm -hmm. And then I seen Satan wrap his little rope around him and yank him right back into the world. Right. I confess to you, the closer I get to you, the harder it is to stand completely on the word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. I get to know you. Mm -hmm. I get to know your weaknesses and I get to know your problems. And when God says, hey, it's time to preach on one of them, I say, yeah. Mm -hmm. we heard the same words. Mm -hmm. Billy Graham preached the simplest message probably any preacher has ever preached in the history of preaching. Preachers today, we're, we're trying to find ways to put new spins on it, right? We've got we to entertain the people. I'm not an entertainer. That is not my job. I'm God called Amen. to preach the word of God. That's yes. all I know. I've not been to college. I've not been trained Bless on how Lord. to speak to people. Very obvious in that a lot of times. But what I do know is that I was a sinner and I accepted yes. Jesus Christ into my heart and Bless I got born Lord. again saved and I fell in yes. love Bless with Lord. the word of God yes. and I couldn't keep my nose out of it burning. And one Come day on. he said, your job in this world is to stand and proclaim Woo! the word yes. that I have written down. Yes. That's all I know how to do and it's all I plan on right. doing. Amen. But are we listening? Come on now. That's good preaching. Hey, don't on. think this isn't hurting me. I better keep going. Verse 11. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding it in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with his wife shall be taken, the age with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others, and with their fields and wives together, for I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. Wow. This is a prophecy Jeremiah was given to Israel, but it's written down in the Word of God. Amen. And it, you know this is living? Yes, sir. You know how I know it's living? Mm -hmm. I've read it cover to cover five, six times, maybe more. And I just read loosely. I, I, all the time I'm in this word. You know, I know it's alive. I can't even tell you how many times I've read Proverbs. And I can pick up Proverbs right now, and I could go to whatever chapter, and I could open it up, and I guarantee you there's a verse in there that I've never noticed before. Yes, sir. That I'm going to read, and it's going to hit me, and I'm going to go, wow, how? It's alive. Yes. And I was thinking about this, that the word is alive and active, and I read those verses and I said, whoa, America's turning their back on God. Yeah. That's true. You know why? You know whose fault it is? The Democrats. Wrong. <laughs> it ain't even their fault. And I'd love to blame them. It's the Republicans. Nope, not even their fault either. And I'd love to blame them. It's all the sinners in the world. Uh-uh. That's right. Uh-uh. You know whose fault? It is that we're in the position we are. Look around. Yep. It's the church's fault. Why we compromised? Mm -hmm. We've compromised That's our right. beliefs. Nowhere in here have I read a word that says change with the times. Mm -hmm. no. Go That's with right. the world. Mm -hmm. Stop on. offending people and just be with. Go with the motions. No, it's just stand firm. Hey, it's just be like that tree planted by the water. Don't be moved. Yes. And we've moved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I read these verses and how God said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in. I'm going to destroy husband. I'm going to destroy wife. Yeah. I'm going to take your houses. I'm going to give them to somebody else. Mm. He did it. Listen, this prophecy came true yes, it did. in Israel. But what if yesterday morning, when I opened up my Bible, actually, God gave me this sermon sitting on the front porch. <laughs> A little cabin in Cody, Wyoming. What if that evening when he gave me that was because he wanted us to have the one That's it. that was coming? Mm -hmm. So, well, that's depressing. But what if we do something? Mm -hmm. What if we actually listen for one? Not, not just hear it. That's mm -hmm. the problem. We hear the word. 
we hear it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We need to change this and change that. Blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing. Well, we're hearing, but we're not listening. Mm -hmm. So what if we would start to listen? Mm -hmm. the, those verses, that's not good. Verse, verse 13. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given the covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone feels falsely. Turn your TV on in the middle of the night. You know what you're going to find? Amen. You're going to find this joker telling you that if you plant a thousand dollar seed, God's going to bless you. Yeah. <laughs> even the priests are dealing falsely. Does this not yeah. fit today? Yes. Strong? That's right. I only got to my verse. Verse 14. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no hmm. peace. Zach, I want you to read your NIV, verse 14. I actually like it better. They dress the, the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Did you hear that? Hmm. They, they dress the wound, this is the world, dresses the wound. God's saying the world dresses the wound of my people like it's not a serious wound. And they tell you, you have peace. They say, peace, peace. And there is no peace. The NLP says it's a superficial. Superficial. Healing. For a mortal wound. You know what I'd love to do this morning? I'd love to not preach the sermon, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. I'd love to just stand here and say, sin. I'd love, Bernie, I, I would just love to just say, you, you, need to, you need to recognize your sin. Just leave it at sin, because if I say sin, here's what you and I hear. We hear, oh yeah, do not covet thy neighbor's wife, do not steal, yeah. do not kill. Uh, do not commit adultery. Have no other gods before me. That's what we hear with sin. I'd love to leave it at that because you all would find some sin that you don't commit. Like, I've never murdered anybody. I'm good. I can't because that's not the message. Mm -hmm. God knows what he's talking about. You Amen. get that? Yeah. He took yes, this he Jeremiah 6.14 and he placed it right there in the Bible for you and I because he knew that we thought we were sneaky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he knew that we thought we really had something. He says the world comes and gives you a band-aid when you need surgery. Mm -hmm. yes. Listen, if I'm working in the barn and I gouge my arm, I mean, I gouge that thing, it lays wide open, and there's blood going everywhere. I'm sorry to get graphic. But if that's what I do, and I go running into the house, and I go running in, there's blood everywhere, I'm covered in blood, and I say, Steph, Steph, get me one of those SpongeBob Band-Aids quick. <laughs> She's going to look at me like I'm insane. Yeah. <laughs> insane. No, you don't need a Band-Aid. No, I do it, just a Band-Aid. What would a Band-Aid do for that? Nothing. Yeah. Listen, I, I've been cut really deep before and had to wrap rags around it really tight at work. And a rag gets covered in blood and a band-aid's not even going to stick to it. That's what this scripture's saying. He's saying you have a wound that is so bad, that is so deep, that, it, that it, it's going to kill you. It's a mortal wound and you're trying to put a band-aid on it. Mm -hmm. The world's trying to teach us that your little sin... Come on now. But your little sin is okay. Mm. You know what Satan told me? Come on. He talks to me a lot. Not to preach. He actually did tell me not to preach. Actually, he's sitting right there. He said, You don't need me to preach this morning. They sing enough. He tells me a lot of things. But the only good part about this, I'm starting to learn him a little better because he don't ever shut up. <laughs> it's true. And he always lies. He said, You know what? You don't need to preach this sermon. You already preached it. He's such a liar. And I said, that's a good point. But I haven't completely got it. So maybe I need to preach it again. Mm -hmm. That little bitty sin. Is it little? No. 
No. You ever hear a thing called tetanus? Mm -hmm. uh, probably everybody in here has had a tetanus shot. When you're babies, you get a tetanus shot, and then when you get older and you cut your finger on something, they give you another tetanus shot, and they don't feel very good. If I went out, Brother Bill, with no tetanus shot, and I stepped on a nail, yeah. you know how big my puncture wound would be? You know what I could do? I could literally put a Band-Aid on it, and it would take care of it for a little bit. You know what tetanus does? I didn't. I had to look it up. I'm not that smart. It shuts down your nerves. Lock jaw is what they call it. You know it can kill you? Yes. You know something so small, just a little bitty puncture wound can kill you had you not had a tetanus shot to take care of it? It can kill you. It will, here's what will happen. You'll quit breathing. It will shut down the nerves inside of your breathing machine here. I don't know all the medical terms. That's why I call it the breathing machine. It will shut down and you will die. From a little bitty Be thou instructed. Be thou instructed, the word said. Right. What do we have in our lives that that's that, that little bit? Listen, don't listen to the world. The world's telling you peace, peace. Mm -hmm. Peace, peace. There is no peace. God's telling us very plainly this morning, no, you don't have peace. What you have is a wound that will kill you. And we're running around. Thinking we have this peace. Mm. When there is no peace. Lord help us. I could come in here. And I could build you up. Right? There's a, there's a few sermons I've got outlined in my Bible that are great revival messages. And they're fun because they build everybody up, Zach, and they get all excited, and you're all smiling instead of looking at me like you are right now, and it's so much more fun to preach. But you know what? If you got a mortal wound, it didn't do me any good. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I could just call it sin. Mm -hmm. If you had a problem with pornography pre-salvation God healed you from that problem of pornography would it be alright to, to just look a little bit no, no. <laughs> it's easy to say no sitting in church isn't it but what about those times when no one's around what about those times when it's just you? What about those times when that temptation's more than you can handle? It, just, a, just a little bit. The world will tell you it's okay. Just a little bit is okay. Listen, just a little bit is not okay. Amen. It's okay. Drink in moderation. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Right. The Bible plainly says, abstain from strong drink. Hey. Period. That's what it says. Exactly. Amen. But the world will tell you it's okay. Go ahead. Keep it in your house. Let your 10-year-old that is an alcoholic, born an alcoholic from his head to his toe, if he ever touches a drink, go ahead, keep it in there. Lead your kid right into that. It's a mortal wound that the world's telling you, oh, just peace, peace. It's okay, peace, peace. Every time I do a, a wedding, I stand there and I look at this couple. And they've got that whole glazed over wedding look. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the boys. <laughs> Bridezilla somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I look at them, Brother Bill, and I see them face to face, uh -huh. and, and I hear them repeat these words in sickness and hell. <laughs> And as they're saying it, I'm thinking of when Steph's sick, or when I'm sick, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't have a clue what they're even saying. Yeah. Not a clue. 
me tell you something. Plain and God's not a fan of divorce. Right. I think we need a reset, church. Yes. I think we need a, a serious reset. Yes. Because somehow along the way, we've changed the rules. We've decided what God's okay with and what he's not. Listen, when I marry those two and they stand there and they make this promise, they say, I promise to be faithful to you as long as we both shall live. And then at the end, I say, by the power given to me by God Almighty, I pronounce you husband and wife. Do you know what God expects after that? He expects that husband and that wife to fight for their marriage. Amen. Because I serve a God that commits. And he expects us to commit. Aren't you glad that he doesn't go that way with us? Aren't you glad that when you Amen. come to an altar of prayer and you give your heart to Jesus Christ, that he doesn't say, you know, when I feel like it, I'm going to be right there for you. <laughs> when you're praising like you should, I'm going to be right there with you. But when you're bombing, I'm going to step away. Mm -hmm. It's not God. No, it's not. God said, I'm making a commitment with you. You know why he gave us marriage? It's an analogy of what we have with Christ. Right. The Bible says when we get one with Christ, that, that is a marriage. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to have a great supper one day called the marriage supper of the Lamb when we all get to heaven and we sit down at the table and the bride of Christ, which is the church, these little sins. Little. No. Right. I'll be working at work or in the barn and I'll cut myself. And my hands, they're stained. I washed, I promise. I took a shower this morning, I think. <laughs> but I get dirty is my point. And I'll get a cut on my hand. And you know what I don't do? Because I guess I was born in the early 80s, and that's back when men were still men, and now they're girls. <laughs> I told you I can only preach the truth. Yeah, amen. Bless the Lord. Not all that way, Trevor. Don't get offended. <laughs> not stand up on me. I'll show you a man. <laughs> For the most part, I don't go stop. Dad! Daddy, stop working for a second. Ah! Snap, SpongeBob Band-Aid. I don't. I don't even stop. I keep going. And dirt and grease and oil gets in there. And then I ugh, rub it all around. And you know what happens about two days later? Disinfected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it hurts twice as bad as it did the first time. And it gets all red and then nasty. And I got to, for days, put peroxide on it and clean it up. That little bitty cut. That if I would have done something about it at the beginning, mm -hmm. if I'd have been a little bit more like the modern man and stop and put a Band-Aid on it, we're going to buy more SpongeBob Band-Aids. <laughs> Wouldn't have mattered. God's telling us this morning he had not changed. Mm -hmm. You understand that? He is not changing with the times. That's right, amen. We need to be more understanding as a church. No, we don't. Steph's preached this morning. Yes. A very plain and a very true yes. sermon. We are love. Yes. The church is love, but the church is not compromising. Right. I didn't make the rules. Mm -hmm. God did. Mm -hmm. When God said, thou shall not, you know what it means? Mm -hmm. That sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Why don't we, oh, listen. I'll tell you why. It's right here, verse 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Wow. Huh? I'm saying even when I call them out on it. Right. And I give them an opportunity to repent. They don't even see that it's bad. Right. Listen to me. Anybody in here under the age of 25, listen to me. You are going to have a really, really tough time. 
because everything in this world is going to teach you something that's wrong. Everything in this world is going to try to tell you that sin is not bad. That it's okay to live however you want, to do whatever you want. It's not right. Amen. That's why we can have a people that don't even blush. Right. They can, can hear an abomination. Uh, Steph or Angie, one of us was telling me yesterday that there's a group of, of pedophiles. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. Do you know what a pedophile is? There's a group of them that are coming together because they need recognized as a people. That makes me sick to my stomach as a dad. They don't need recognized as a people. They need good godly people to lay their hands on them and pray those demons out of them. That's the world that we live in. That's how we can say, oh yeah, let's give them a flag and let's give them some time and let's recognize these pedophiles and not be ashamed of it. That is sickening to me. And we've got to that point, not all of a sudden, we've got to that point because little by little by little by little, we've stood away from the word. We've stepped away and we've stepped away and we've stepped away and we've stepped away away until we got to the point that God's standard and God's word is so far away from us and everything is so muddy now, we don't even know what's right and wrong. That's why he said, you've done abomination and you're not even mad. You're not even upset. You don't even blush at what you did. Because we keep stepping away from the Word. So true. How did we get to where we are? How did we as a country, founded not by men that owned slaves, Mm-mm. but by godly men, yes. that built this country on Christian godly values? How did we get so far away? I think about every soldier from the very beginning Bernie every war that's ever been fought for the freedom in this country might have spit on their grave we're losing it church Mm -hmm. it's true the United States of America is the last stronghold for Christianity you get that you know why we came here We were being persecuted as Christians. I'm all about freedom. That's what the United States stands for. But we're losing. Really? We're going to recognize the pedophiles? Mm -hmm. It won't be long and men will be marrying horses. Yes. (laughs) You can laugh. I guarantee you it's coming. Yes. Because that's how I identify. got that way because of these little superficial wounds that we think are superficial that are actually immortal. They'll actually kill you. Listen, you don't need me to to run down this list of what you shouldn't be doing. You know it. You know know what the best thing about being a Christian is for me? One of the best things? When I mess up, and I do. This thing called conviction hits me. This this Holy Spirit that lives in me, he starts tugging on things in there that makes me sick. I don't know what he's doing. He's pushing on some button, and it physically makes me sick. That's called conviction. He's saying, you're doing something that I don't like. You're doing something that ought to make you blush. You're doing something that's an abomination. And I say, whoa. I still look around. I see so many people missing. And my flesh says, "Mm, maybe you ran them off. I see our teenagers one by one stepping away from the church. And I say, what can I do differently? It's what I don't want. Listen, we live in a free country. That's awesome. You got freedom of choice. That's great. You have, the, you have the right to never come back to this church again. You have the right to never step foot in another church again as long as you live. 
Practice whatever form of belief you want to practice and live until you're an old man or woman and die. But rest assured, I guarantee you, on everything that I am, there will be a day where you will stand or kneel at the feet of Jesus Christ Amen. and have to give an account for the life that you live. There's no getting around that. That's right. Believe it or not, it's coming. And you know what? Everybody knows it. That's why people get so stirred up, Zach. That's why you can't say the name of Jesus. Right. Listen, I can say yeah. Muhammad. I can say yeah. Buddha. I can say whatever other false god that I want to throw out there, and That's nobody's right. offended. I want to get a little fat man sitting in Indian yeah. style on my shirt, run around and say, I worship Buddha. Nobody will say a word about it. But I get the word Jesus put on my shirt, and yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. I'm yeah. a hater. All of a sudden, I'm somebody you got to watch out for. All of a sudden, that you need to keep an eye on this guy. Yeah, you need to keep yeah. an eye on this guy. This guy's been yeah. born again. Yeah. take the agnostic mm -hmm. or the atheist and you start having a Jesus talk with them and all yeah. of a sudden they get angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can be agnostic and you can talk about Buddha, but you start talking about Jesus. I don't want to hear yeah. that Jesus talk. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that is the name above all yes. names. Yes. Yes. That's right. Listen, Amen. That name's above your right to believe whatever you want to believe. Right. That? Yes, sir. So I believe deep down, we all know there's coming a day where we face him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you ready? Because let me tell you, death is not a respecter of persons. No. That's right. Don't bank on being an old man or an old woman. I lost friends in middle school. Middle school. Levi's age. I lost friends in high school. I sat in my driver's ed class, and the state police officer came up, and he said, out of this room, two people before this school year is over will die in a car crash. And I said, what an idiot. Why would that guy say something like that? You know what happened before the year was over? Two people, actually it was more than that, in my driver's ed class died in car crashes. He was stating statistics. He said, we can get caught up in the world and we get caught up in busyness. I know. But your last day could be today. It sure right. could. That's true. Right. See, I don't like it when you try scaring us into it, preacher. I'm not trying to scare you into it. I'm trying to tell you the plainest truth I know. Amen. And that is this. When you die, it's appointed unto man wants to die. That's an appointment you cannot get out of. That's right. Listen, you can stop paying your taxes. You can run. You can do all that <laughs> stuff. But you cannot avoid this point. You will die. After this, the Bible says, is to judgment. And you are not going to be able to say, Oh, Lord, my granny, she played the organ in the church. <laughs> my grandpa was a tithing member of a Baptist church, Lord. My mom and my dad, they were good people. I was nice to the other kids in school. Listen, listen, none of that's going to work. That's right. It's true. But, but Lord, the world told me that it was okay. But Lord, it, it was just a little bit of problem that I had. Let me tell you something. God doesn't see sin big and little. That's right. It's just Even as Christians, we, we struggle with that one sometimes. We, we yeah. like the cat. We do. Humans categorize sin. God does not. Amen. God takes that pedophile that makes me sick. Come on. And that sickness that I get in my stomach, yeah. God sees in a liar. Right. Absolutely. Whoa. <coughs> the list of all the people that's going in the lake of fire at the very end of it says, and all liars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you ready? Right now, if, if God called right now, that's not him calling. <laughs> he works in mysterious ways. <laughs> I'm in church 
who flung it? <laughs> Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Isaiah 57, verse 18. I have seen his ways. Whoa. I have seen. Listen, nothing you're doing is not seen. God said, I have seen his ways, but then he says this fantastic thing right behind it. And I will heal him. Praise God. That's an amen woman. <laughs> amen. Yes. I have seen his ways, and I will heal him. God knows you're wretched. God knows that you're not good for anything. That's what Steph was saying up here. He doesn't see that in you. He looks down on you and says, Wow, look how beautiful they are. Wow, look at the potential that they have. That's why he's able to say, you know what? I look down and I see you. I see what you're doing. But I will heal. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of his lips. Peace. Peace. You hear me? Don't worry about that one. That one doesn't matter. You know what that is? That's a distraction. Yes. You know why it's a distraction? God's working. Yes, amen. Oh, yeah. You know that? Yeah. You know what? You're not doing that because you're hungry. <laughs> but your stomach makes that work. <laughs> you're doing that because you're feeling something. Mm -hmm. Because God's telling you, I see you. Hey, me. I do. That guy that you're not even real sure is real yet. That guy that, that, that maybe sometimes when you're alone, you might talk to me. You might, might say a word or two. That guy that, that maybe you've prayed out and said, you need to show me that you're real. He's telling you this morning, hey, I am. Here I am. And I see you right where you're at. I see what you're doing. He's saying, hey, sinner, I see you. Hey, Christian, I see you. I see where you're at. And I want to heal you. I want to restore comforts to you. Listen, if there's something in your life that shouldn't be in here, get ahead of it this morning. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go forward. I don't care. I love the elder, but I don't care if you stay right where you're at. You know what I care? I care that you pray. Yes. That little big thing. Peace, peace. You know what you're going to find out? There is none. Mm -hmm. When I was quitting smoking, and I'm, and I'm through. The first few months, you know what I wanted? Just one. Right? That was the lie that my body was telling me. It would say, man, if you just had one cigarette, mm -hmm. even just one puff, whoo, it would be so much better. Peace, peace. That's what it was telling me. You know, that, that, that feeling, that grouchiness that you have because you have to smoke, you, you, if you just have one smoke, it'll settle all that and everything will be good. And you know what happened? Because when I was trying to quit, there was times I'd have weak moments and I'd take a smoke. And you know what happened? For about 15 seconds, there'd be peace. And then you know what I wanted? More! I've tried this with worldly things. So many people live in that way, miserable in life. Think, well, if I just have more stuff. I just have more stuff. I'll buy a new car. I'll buy a new house. I'll buy a new gun. <laughs> that was me. Peace, peace. No peace. God's saying, I see you. And I have peace, peace. Ironic, because they both had peace twice, huh? Listen, wherever you're at this morning, whatever the past has been for you, it can be different. You can leave here different than what you came. Amen. As we stand. Yes. You need to pray this morning. You either come forward and pray or pray where you're at. Hang on a second. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody on the phone and ask you to shut that thing off. <laughs>